Well, hello everyone and welcome to the episode everyone has been waiting for for a very, very long time, myself included. We're going to taste test the 87 year old Giant Crimson. Now this is something that I've been looking forward to doing for a very long time. Something that uh, I know a lot of you have been inquiring about since the last video when it was when the tomato was starting to turn red and today is that day. Uh, so don't skip any part of this episode. I first have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that we have a tomato ready to harvest and to taste test for you. The bad news is that the the, the large tomato, the one that had some cat facing and some issues, that one actually got mutilated by birds. I was able to save it. I came out and uh, it was hanging down extra low and I said, whoa, what? that's really hanging down a lot lower than I remembered it the night prior. And sure enough, I walked up closer and the whole bottom had been hollowed out. Now, also good news is I was still able to harvest some seed from that, but I was not able to do a taste test on it. Um, other news also is it was really, really struggling. Um, for those that have lived uh, you know, in Michigan, you know our weather gets crazy around this time. It can go from 50 at night all the way up to 90 uh, during the day. And those temperature swings really wreak havoc on plants. Um, and we've had an exceptionally dry, exceptionally dry year. I, I mean, I can count on, on one hand the amount of times it's rained in the past two months. It's really been dry. We have, we have burn warnings and all this stuff. We can't, can't do anything with fire. Um, it's just, it's a ridiculously dry year. Um, and that's also been really hard on these plants here in, in containers. So I actually upgraded this plant to uh, what you can kind of see around the edge there in the shot. Uh, this is actually a 10 gallon container, not a smart pot. Um, I just was finding it was drying out far too fast and I wanted the plant to stay as stress-free as possible. Um, so there's some good, there's some bad, there's some updates that have happened. Uh, it's doing a whole lot better since I transplanted. It's definitely greened up and appreciated everything that I've done for it so far. Um, I will be transplanting up the other plants as well. They're still quite small. So they've got a lot of soil left before they start using that up. Um, but with that out of the way, uh, I just want to keep you guys all in the loop. You always say, hey, anything that happens, I want to know about it. So, um, so there, there's your about two weeks, maybe a week and a half, worth of updates for the giant crimson tomato. Uh, with that being said, we've got we've got a ripe one. So coming in close, let's do a close up on this before we harvest it. I like documenting all this stuff um, just for, for your guys' sake and also for uh, for our sake. It's something that we really are, are very proud of. So coming in close, let's check this out. It's also still not a perfect tomato as well. You'll find, uh, you'll find that it's not perfect when it comes to the bottom. Um, it had just a little bit of, uh, just a teeny tiny little bit of blossom end rot. Um, but that, you know, again, that happens in super dry, super hot conditions. It just can't uptake the, the calcium that's in the soil. Um, so it's not perfect, but it is really, really beautiful nonetheless. So here is the giant crimson tomato. Now it doesn't look too giant, I get it. It's one of those things that, uh, Tomatoes don't always have to be uh, by their name in order to be beautiful. Obviously, they will get a little bit larger, but I think the average size of this is right around a pound, eight ounces to a pound. So this is a beautiful tomato, probably coming in right at around six ounces, a little bit less than uh, than the um, than the expected, uh, you know, expected weight but because it was in a container, it was very stressed, uh, it probably, the plant is probably ripening up its fruit faster than it would normally to, uh, to preserve its seeds. That's kind of the defense mechanism that it does. But just look at how beautiful, absolutely stunning, focus on that, there we go. It's just stunning how beautiful this is. It's got uh, orange and red streaking. It's got, there we go. So it's got orange and pink and red streaking. You can see there, a little bit of blossom end rot at the bottom. That won't be a problem. Um, that was just caused from the, the, the drought that we've been having. It's just been crazy how dry it's been. But it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an incredible uh, experience to taste this nonetheless. Um, 
as you can see behind me. We do have a larger tomato here beginning to ripen up. We have some more beautiful tomatoes that I'm really looking forward to. These ones are ripening up and sizing up. We also have some tomatoes here that are ripening and sizing up. All right, let's, uh, let's cut this open here. So I'm going to just take a, a cross section first. I'll show you guys that. And then we'll, I'll have to scrape out the seeds so I won't get the full flavor. Uh, hopefully um, that does not offend anybody uh, because I don't want to consume a single seed. So normally the flavor um, is kind of, it includes the gel and the seeds together, but um, this taste test won't include that. So, uh, all right. I'm, I am really, really nervous. So if the camera work has not been the best, it's because I really kind of can't focus. I've been like, I'm shaking. I'm, I'm just, I've been waiting for this for so long so long you have no idea how just how on edge i've been to get all these these tomatoes to even where they're at right now um it's just it's it's <laughs> it's been stressful okay if people ask if i would do this again and i i might but i i don't know if i would at the same time this has been really really stressful um it's just i don't i don't like stressful things that's why i garden <laughs> Wow, that is very, very pretty. That is a very pretty pattern. It's definitely a beefsteak kind of style. It's not really juicy from everything I can see. It's, it's got some juice, but it's, it's a very meaty tomato, very firm, and it's sliced very nicely. So, there is that. I'm going to take a small slice and I'll scrape out the seeds and then we will uh, and then we'll go from there. Let's give this a try here. Oh my gosh, talk about suspense. I am like shaking. All right. Let's go. Cheers everyone. Thank you for following me along with this journey and the support you all have given us. I appreciate it. All right, let's go. <laughs> hmm. Wow. It's really interesting. Okay, I gotta fill you guys in. So, wow. That's a really cool. Oh my wow. Oh my word. It's very sweet. Um, it is. It. How do I explain this? Okay. The texture is a little strange. The texture is slightly, slightly mealy. It's not, it's not like it's grainy. It's that it's creamy, but it's almost as if you're biting into, how do I describe this texture? Maybe like a slightly overripe cantaloupe. Um, it is slightly, uh, slightly mealy, not quite like what I consider like grainy. It's very buttery, but it has these little bits of like little pops of texture that are almost like little water bubbles that pop, like little um, little bits of foam almost that you're biting into. And it adds this like kind of like crisp crunch that's really enjoyable. It's sweet, but it's not tangy at all. Um, it does not have like a classic tomato tang to it. Um, I got to go back for another bite. Um, I'm going to scrape the seeds out the same way as I did before. That could be affecting the flavor a little bit because the, the gel usually is more acidic than the meat itself. Um, so I'm guessing that's where a lot of the sweetness is coming from. It probably would be a little more balanced um, had it had that gel. That's why I'm, I wish I had more of these and it wasn't an extinct variety. Otherwise, I would... I, I mean, I just go right for it, um, but I got to try it without the seeds again, unfortunately, because we got every seed matters here. All right. Yeah, it's just this, wow. 
It's got so much flavor. How do I even describe it? It's it's not even remotely acidic. Um, it is not remotely acidic. It's not remotely tangy. It is quite sweet. Um, imagine taking ketchup, starting with ketchup, but adding like water to it, and then adding maybe like like sugar to it. It's got a ketchupy flavor, but it's missing all of the acidity, all of the bite to it. The skin is very tender. It's not like a chewy skin at all. Um, in fact, my, my fingers are actually getting quite a bit, uh, they're getting rather sticky uh, from the juice. But it's, um, wow, that is remarkable. It is a very interesting tomato. Probably one of the more interesting tomatoes I've ever had. Um, in terms of the flavor profile, it's quite exceptional. But also because it's so meaty and that meaty that meatiness is not like any other meatiness I've had like a, a beef steak or a brandy wine or a, you know even like black crims they're they're sweet um, some are tangy some are are meatier um, the meatiness of this is not like a like a like a how do I like a dense meatiness it's like it's like little pockets of moisture surrounded by meatiness in the in the the flesh of the of the tomato it is such i cannot quite describe the flavor of it and i'm going to probably have to have cindy try it i might have a little video up on on facebook of her trying it um because i'd like to get see what she says about it um uh, it's just almost impossible to put my finger on just the experience of what i'm the sensation that i'm having in my mouth because it's not it's really unlike anything I've quite ever had in a tomato. And it's very, it's very, it's interesting. I don't know how to put it. I don't really know where to classify it. Um, Cause it's, it's very, it's completely foreign. It's unlike anything I've ever tasted before. Um, wow, that's very, very unique. Very unique. Um, so, I, I mean, hey, I'm happy. I hope you're happy. Uh, I am I'm really thrilled that it at least even tasted good. I had no idea what what to expect But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully uh, hopefully you have learned something through this series uh, We will definitely be um, saving as many seeds as humanly possible. I will be keeping you all posted um, and again uh, you know, I, I think this has been a learning experience for everyone that um, you know there there are there are just certain things you lose when you breed out traits and I, having this trait available to us will be such an such an asset to uh, to home gardeners from here on out. Hopefully, we can really save the genetic diversity of this and get it into people's hands eventually. I don't know where we're going to be at at the end of this year. I don't know. Um, it's going to be extremely difficult to uh, to do something in terms of giving out seeds because of just how you know how few there are in here. But we're going to see once all these start ripening up, kind of where we're at. We're going to have other tomatoes as well that are already coming into production. Um, so I'll keep you all posted. Um, but as always, stay patient, um, keep growing bigger going home, and, uh, and share this with your friends. I think the, the entire 87-year-old uh, tomato saga has been a fun one. It has been very, very exciting, and, uh, and one that I will certainly cherish forever, regardless if I do this or not with another variety. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, and we'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.